conductors, we're basically talking about a coil and a circuit. We're going to look at a couple different types of circuits. But an inductor itself will have a voltage drop across it when the current through it is changing. Because if the current is changing, then the magnetic field that current is producing is also changing. Which, going back to Faraday's law, that will induce a voltage to oppose that change. So an inductor has a voltage drop across it whenever the current is changing. The magnitude of that voltage drop depends upon the value of the inductor. L is the inductance of your inductor. And DIDT is the rate at which the current is changing. Inductors also store energy if they have current flowing through them. So if a current is flowing through an inductor, that means it's creating a magnetic field. And that magnetic field is the energy storage facility. I don't think that's the right way to put it. But anyway, the energy is stored in the magnetic field. The amount of energy an inductor stores depends, again, on its inductance and it depends upon how much current is flowing through it. So we're going to look at a few different circuits. The first circuit we're going to look at is an RL charging circuit. RL meaning it has a resistor and an inductor in it. It's a charging circuit meaning there's a battery as well. So we have a battery connected to an inductor and a resistor. Before the circuit is completed, there's no current flowing through the inductor, so it has no flux. Once all the wires are connected and the circuitry is completed and everything's connected together, the battery starts current flowing, but the inductor opposes that current flow. And so we, what we get is the net flow of current in the circuit as a function of time Initially, the inductor keeps the current from flowing, so we start out with no current, and that current will increase until it eventually reaches a maximum value. Now, Kirchhoff's loop rule still, apply, still applies. Battery voltage in has to equal the voltage across the resistor plus the voltage drop across the inductor. So the inductor and the resistor added together, their voltages added together, have to equal the battery voltage. We know the voltage drop across the resistor is IR. So as long as there's current flowing through our resistor, there's a voltage drop across it. Voltage drop across the inductor is LVIDT. So I Time equals zero. When this circuit is hooked up, the instant it's all hooked up, the inductor is able to oppose the current flow from the battery, and the current is at zero. That means initially, at time equals zero, when the circuit is right connected up, the voltage drop across the resistor is zero. If there's no current, then there's no voltage drop across the resistor. That's when DIDT is biggest. The current is changing the most. The slope of the line is biggest. Remember, derivative is the slope. As time goes on, the inductor is not 100% successful. If it was 100% successful, it would stop the current from flowing. But if the current stops flowing, then the inductor stops doing anything because the current's not changing. So the net effect is the inductor causes the current to increase slower than it would without the inductance. So as current increases, as current increases, this term gets bigger and bigger. This term then has to get smaller and smaller so that when we add them together, they still equal the battery voltage. Eventually, what is the absolute biggest this term for the resistor can get? can be the battery voltage e. divided by resistance. Right, so the maximum voltage, yeah, the resistor can see is the battery voltage. That will happen when the current is no longer changing. 
So we, stay, we say it's at a steady state. The current is a constant value. Once the current reaches a constant value, a steady state value, then all the voltage drop across is across the resistor. So the maximum current, the steady state value that it reaches, is equal to the battery voltage over the resistance. So once the current has reached a maximum possible value, it stays constant until you change something about the circuit. You'd have to disconnect the inductor in order to change that. Now, the inductor, though, even though its voltage drop goes to zero, delta V goes to zero because DIDT goes to zero, even though the voltage drop goes to zero, it's still storing energy. And it's storing energy because of the magnetic field it's producing. The amount of energy it stores depends upon how much current is flowing through it. And so if it has current, it has energy. It's a little counterintuitive that way. Even though the voltage drop can be zero, it can still store energy. So when the current becomes constant, the energy will be constant. The energy will be constant, and it's a maximum value at that point, because that's a maximum current. Yeah, so when the current is constant, when it's at its maximum value, the energy, yes, will also be constant. And it will be a maximum value. Exactly right. That energy can be used say if we disconnect this circuit from the battery and connect it across some other resistor. That inductor will try to keep the current flowing. You can think of the inductor as being happy with what it just had. If it had current, it wants to keep current flowing. And so the inductor could actually, we call it discharge, and make current flow, not indefinitely, for a little bit of time, it can make current continue to flow through the circuit. As far as the RL charging circuit is concerned, we need an equation that describes the current as a function of time. If you remember back to RC circuits, this looks, the shape of the graph looks like the charge on the capacitor as it was charging. We have a similar form of our equation. So our current as a function of time depends upon our maximum value of current, and then it's 1 minus an exponential function. Tau, again, is called the time constant, but it's not equal to RC because this is not an RC circuit. Why would they do that? Because it has the same meaning. It still means the amount of time it takes to reach 63% of its maximum value. Its value is different for an RL circuit. It is equal to L over R. So the bigger the time constant is, the longer it takes for the current to eventually reach its maximum value. The smaller the time constant is, the quicker it reaches its maximum value. So the types of questions we can ask with this uh, would be similar to the RC circuit. Say we had a battery voltage of 12 volts, an inductor of 30 millihenries, and a resistor of uh, 50 ohms. We could ask something like, how long will it take? for the current to reach, oh, I don't know, 75% of its maximum value. So we want our current to be 75% of its maximum value. So for I of t, we put 0.75 of the maximum value, but the maximum value is E over R. That maximum value cancels. 
we could certainly figure out what the maximum value is, but in, and in terms of answering this question, we don't need to know. Before we can take the natural log of both sides, we need to isolate the exponential function. So I'm going to bring that to the left side to make it positive, and bring the 0.75 to this side. 1 minus 0.75 is 0.25. So we can take the natural log of both sides. The natural log of the exponential function leaves us with the power. And then we have natural log of 0.25 on the other side. So t will be negative tau natural log of 0.25, but tau is L over R. L is 30 millihenries, so 0.03 henries. R is 50 ohms. So this one very quickly reaches 75%, 8.3 times 10 to the negative 4 seconds. Not much time at all, and that's because the inductor is really small. The bigger the inductor, the longer it's going to take for things to happen. So what are the voltage drops across the resistor and the inductor? at that time, so the problem we just looked at. Well, we know the voltage drop across the resistor is IR. We know the voltage drop across the inductor is LDIDT. So, the current. The current at that time is 0.75 of I max. But I max is the EMF of our resistance. So the current at that time is 0.75 times 12 volts over 50 ohms. time is 0.18 amps. Well, that's going to make finding the voltage drop across the resistor really easy. We know the current, we know the resistance. So the voltage drop across the resistor at that time is the current, 0.18 amps, times the resistance, 50 ohms. Questions on that? We're okay with that. So what's the voltage drop across the inductor? And there's twelve going in, the resistor's taking out nine, the inductor has to have the rest. problems you'll see are kind of similar to the ones we saw with the RC charging circuits as well. 